how to make your sales team's interactions with customers more educated, targeted, and efficient. You know nowadays, uh, just relationships and pricing is no longer enough to have a good sales initiative. Uh, clients are very educated. They already have checked for options. And the more educated your sales team is about the options and what the client situation is, the more effective they become. They become. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Analytics for sales teams. Um, thanks for joining us. My name is Johnny Girardi. I'm the founder and CEO of DataSelf. So let's get started. Um, what I'm going to be covering is pretty much the role of data or analytics for sales managers as well as for sales reps. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. And throughout the presentation, we'll do, we're going to do quite, uh, four quick surveys uh, so you can help us better do our webinars. Actually, I'm going to start with a quick survey, uh, just trying to understand uh, what applies to you by joining us here. So if you don't mind, please quickly uh, choose one of these four options. Um, if you need better sales analysis tools, if you're a sales rep, if you're a sales manager, if you're upper management, or and if you're organization uses CRM. So choose all the options that apply to your business and be sure to apply the submit button. Uh, we have a lot of answers still coming, so please be sure to check and click the submit button submit button I'm going to close it in about 10 seconds okay thank you I'm going to close the poll and share the results so most people joining are saying that they need better sales analysis and they're from upper management um, thank you for sharing your thoughts so let's get started uh, with the content. So the first thing I want to talk, talk about is the role of analytics for sales managers, people who are managing the sales team. Uh, one of the best, best books around lately about that purpose is Cracking the Sales Management Code by Jason Jordan. Um, he interviewed several large organizations trying to identify key metrics for effective sales management. And he found out that there are more than 300 key metrics that different organizations use for effective sales management. Now, one of the most interesting things uh, he did, which is really uh, enlightening, is he asked the question, can we manage this metric? I mean, if you're trying to manage your sales team and you're using all these metrics, can you really measure the metric? Well. Uh, what he found out from that standpoint, if you can manage the metric, out of this 300 and something, there are three types of sales metrics. The first one is uh, there are metrics that revolve around sales activities, like calls, meetings, and things like that. Uh, these metrics are used for managing, so you can actually manage your team, how many calls you're making per, per week, how many meetings, and so forth. They can be controlled. So these metrics are fully controlled by the sales managers. Now, there are many metrics that are sales objectives. Well, I want to increase the number of opportunities. I need to, to reach my sales quota. These are the objectives. You cannot really control them. You can influence them. Uh, the more sales activities, uh, the more opportunities you get, uh, the more you're going to be meeting your quota, but it depends on other people, so you do not control it. You actually you use these metrics for diagnosis of your systems and your procedures, for planning, and again, you can influence, but it's not in your control because you depend on your clients and your prospects to engage with you. So those are sales objective metrics. And finally is the business results. How much do you sold, actually, right? 
Uh, and this is pretty much metrics for reporting. You have no control because for people to give you money, you gotta earn it. And it's their, you know, is at the discretion to do it or not. So it's not a controllable metric. Uh, and it's pretty much determined by you doing the sales activities and having the sales objective and effectively achieving your sales objectives, but you have no control. Now, the most interesting thing that uh, 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 Mr. Jordan found from this research is that um, in his research, um, only 17% of the metrics were around sales activities. Uh, most of the metrics were on sales objectives and some on the business results. So uh, this kind of information, if you're managing teams, I highly recommend you to go to this book. It's very informative, giving you insights of how you can do better defining what metrics you should put in place to do a better sales uh, management. Now, let's take a look at some of the procedures and some processes in, in, in uh, dashboards that can help you with the sales management process. I'm going to switch now to um, oopsie, uh, some of the data self uh, dashboards. So one of the first things is that people come to us is they're trying to get a better management of the sales teams. And it's a process. You know, quite often people have poor reporting. They don't have things, uh, metrics on top of the system. And with data self, because it's so much easier and faster to see metrics, to understand them, um, people start to realize, okay, out of all of these metrics that I'm looking at, which ones are important to focus on and how can we get our sales team to use them effectively? And it's a discovery process. You know, sometimes you start with some metrics and eventually you realize you need to change to something else. This example I'm going to go through is from one of our clients that uh, went through the process and found this very productive for them. So initially was, well, uh, they put together this pipeline uh, management report and the account manager, the sales manager, every, every week at the beginning of the week would take one of the account managers and focus only on that account manager who have, have a one-on-one -on -one with the person to analyze specifically the opportunities that this person has in the pipeline and decide and help this, this sales manager decide which ones he should be focusing on. And the reason is, quite often the sales manager, the the, the, account, the uh, sales manager knows a lot about the business and can more quickly identify among the prospects which ones have a bigger chance of really succeeding or at least helping them move through the funnel. Uh, this kind of dashboard is he very helpful for the sales manager as well as the sales rep. Let's say uh, as a sales manager, I come here, I see all the account, the uh, the, the, the reps. I see how much the opportunities they have in their pipeline. I can filter this by looking at you know, open opportunities, one losses, and so forth. And at the bottom, I have all the details of all opportunities. If I choose a specific rep, like Lee in this case, and I click on it, now the dashboard will only show Lee information and show all the accounts in detail. So when, when the account manager was sitting with Lee, let's say, he could go over these opportunities and help Lee focus his effort on where the account manager or the sales manager would believe would be more beneficial for the organization. Uh, so this was an ongoing process at the beginning. Uh, you know, every week there would be meeting to discuss what happened last week and what the salesperson should do the next week. And eventually, as the process took you know, shape and, and really uh, momentum, uh, the one-on-one -on -one meetings were almost no longer required because the sales team now knew what they should do looking at this, and the only using the tool, they would usually be able to look at things and decide what to do. And they would only check with the sales manager if they have questions about you know, their opportunities. Um, another interesting dashboard that was helpful for management was uh, looking at um, um, last contact. You know, how long, uh, it's been how many weeks that uh, the account manager has not been contacting uh, the leads that are in the pipeline. So this show, you know, by account manager, zero to many weeks, and then how many opportunities have been touched, let's say this week, or it's been one week we haven't touched, in the color of each one of these quadrant or these little cells, 
represent how much improbable sales we have in those opportunities together. And again, by clicking here, uh, the, uh, the uh, sales manager will be able to focus specifically on one account manager and specifically look at the opportunities behind it to help, again, the uh, sales reps to do their jobs better. Um, other things also used can be like sales funnel. Again, you know, looking at sales funnel for all reps, and then you choose, let's say, Lee. Then you go there, and now you're focusing your sales funnel only in Lee, checking how the funnel looks like you know, the breakdown of opportunities by the stage and all the, all the details. So see those, these are some examples of uh, how um, uh, sales management dashboards can help. And again, it's a discovery process. Uh, one of the good news is if you take a solution like DataSelf, where you have a lot of out-of-the-box dashboards as a starting point, you can start discussing which ones will be beneficial for your business experiment them with your team or create new ones and you start figuring out exactly in you for your sales processes how you can make them more effective let me open a, a second poll now so what are your reporting challenges and if you don't mind answering please uh, the option is difficult to use I think there's no need to explain poor performance is low reports Lack of access anytime, anywhere, meaning maybe you need um, um, access via mobile devices. Uh, if you have data silos, you know, you have information coming from different systems and you want to sit together with your sales reports. And not contextual mean sometimes you need the information, but you just don't know where to find it. So the information is not coming to you in the flow of your process. Um, so please be sure to vote and press the submit button. Still getting some answers. Ten more seconds, please. Make your choices and click, uh, click submit. All right, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you very much. Sharing the results. So about the same number of people chose difficult to use, lack of data silos, and not contextual. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's move along. Uh, now, what about a role of analytics of data for sales reps? Hmm, interesting. Uh, first of all, sales reps are the guys actually, you know, selling. You know, quite often uh, their needs are different than the sales managers. Uh, and what are the characteristics of great sales reps? Well, they are competitive. Uh, they really do better than the others, right? They're number driven, they want to sell more, they want to get more commission, and they're curious. They want to see what more they can learn that can help them close things more quickly. If your sales reps don't have these traits, probably you, could, you should find others because you really need to have a sales team that, that has these three uh, traits. Now, what is really important for a rep? What's motivating from a, from a, from a data standpoint? What can you do that is important for them and to motivate them to do better. Well, typically uh, is building dashboards and information that will, you know, that will kick into their main traits. You know, they're competitive, they're numbers driven, and they're curious. So typically one of the important dashboards that you should provide them with, and again, this is an example from the same company that I was talking before that really worked well for, for them is let's say show a quota dashboard where you show the whole company metrics, the whole thing by region and then by individuals. And then you put you know, colors. If your bar is green, it means it met the quota, so you're good. If it's below the quota, then it is like, you know, is in the red, orange, or um, uh, yellow areas. So let's say if I were Betty in this example, and I'm way behind Barbara, and I'm a competitive sales rep, I'm going to say, what is she doing that I'm not, you know, that I'm not? You know, can I learn from the people that are doing really well to try to improve my processes? Of course, you have to look at, you know, uh, um, privacy information, so be sure to build a dashboard that you can share things with uh, other people. They're not 
privacy topics. And if you can, share some of the things that will kick your reps, uh, you know, uh, 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 curiosity to, to learn from others and try to be better. So in this example, I say, okay, Betty is not doing so well. So she can maybe go to another dashboard where she can see information from other, you know, uh, uh, reps like Barbara. And then you can see, oh, look at this. You know, Barbara is calling a lot than me than I calling per week. And she's, you know, emailing and doing a lot of activities, sales activities, way more than me. So maybe, you know, that's a tip. You know, maybe I have to up my game and call more people and maybe see, you know, which ones are more effective. So again, put information from other people that are not proprietary, that are private, but that, that can help each individual rep to see what they can do more to be more effective. Let me show some other examples of uh, dashboards here uh, that for reps also prove to be valuable. So suppose Betty, you know, she figures that you know she needs to call more people. Who is she going to call? Just open the contact list and call one by one? Uh, well, maybe, but maybe in your business there are different ways to find which uh, uh, prospects are hotter. Uh, so building dashboards that can define who is hot is a tool that can help the, the, the sales manager uh, figure that out by themselves, uh, the sales rep figure it out by themselves. Again, sales managers should influence the process and, and help them decide who to call, but the tools should also give them information so they can choose who to call. Uh, this is one example of a who's hot um, um, dashboard. Here you would have the companies in your pipeline and then the bars are the number of type of contacts that uh, this company has been doing with, with, with your business. In this, is, this example, we're pulling, uh, the client was pulling website, website hits, uh, email contacts and calls, and then, you know, suppose I'm Betty again, and I come here and suppose I know that this time of the day, you know, right now, 9 a.m., it's a great time to call let's say, uh, Texas, um, and a few states here. So I pick and choose those states. And right now, the list at the top you know, tells me uh, which of these companies have, you know, who, who, who is hot um, in those states. And now I can choose. Let's say, hey, I'm going to call Frederick and see what's going on. So now, before I call Frederick, I go to my customer trends, and I choose Frederick here. So I choose, you know, Frederick, and then what I can see is, hey, look at this. Frederick, you know, is a good client. You know, we're doing business. It's been profitable. Uh, this is my sales trend for the past two years on a monthly basis. Uh, business is growing, and 2015 is bigger than 2014. So, you know, wow, I mean, definitely Frederick has been a good client. So I'm giving context to me before I call Frederick, Frederick so I know what to talk with them, not just being, hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? No. Give them information so they're educated about the client trends. So when they talk with the client, they can help the client more quickly decide what to order. Uh, and then you can add to this kind of report many pieces of information. For this company, for instance, they had product lines, and you know we're we're in April, so he, uh, they put a report showing what the client has ordered this April and what ordered last years April side by side so look at this hey diary they're buying almost zero I mean almost nothing a diary what's going on so when I'm calling Frederick I'm gonna let you know the, the, the person talk about what they're looking for and whatnot they're gonna say hey why you're not ordering so much diary you know is there something wrong with our product is the competition knocking on pricing contextual educated targeted is a conversation that makes very effective in the client, in this case, Frederick, is going to appreciate that you as a sales rep, you know them and you know their business. So it's a big difference than just calling, being friendly, hi, how are you doing? You know what's going on, you're targeted, you're educated, uh, and you're helpful. Now, let me choose another example here. If I go and, you know, I'm, I finish my call with Frederick and then Mason call me. And then I pick up the phone, hey, how are you doing? Then, oh, well, let, I need the context from Mason. So I know what, uh, you know, he's, he's asking me, and I want to be sure I, I'm also, you know, I'm in the context. 
So as Mason is, you know, we're tell, saying, how, how are you doing, why not? He's ask, the person starts asking me questions and why not. And then I start looking at the trends here and again, I see what's going on. And I see that they are not so profitable. I mean, I'm losing money with, uh, I mean, you know, for my quota, I'm losing uh, profitability with this client. I click on the profitability as I'm talking uh, with this person and I can see which products are being unprofitable. I mean, again, if you make these dashboards contextual to what the salesperson is doing, they will be so much more educated about what the client needs are and what their trends are so you can help them decide what to do. But also, you're going to be contextual to your own business's main needs. So if profitability is something that is important for you, you can provide information like this so as you are negotiating with the client and whatnot, you have more information in your fingertips to decide which way you should go. So uh, these are some of the examples of uh, dashboards that can help sales reps to be more targeted, educated, and efficient. Uh, from a contextual standpoint, uh, typically, the more you put information in their processes, the better. Uh, if they use an ERP system, if they use a CRM system. So the idea is to insert these reports and dashboards in their changing applications to find that information. The example that I'm showing here is with Salesforce, but it also works with you know, pretty much any CRM where these uh, data self dashboards can be embedded into the application so as they go to their accounts, their account man their their contacts and whatnot, the reports will be there already contextual. So let's say if I go to the Frederick account and I and I open that page, it could show right there in the uh, contact information what they have been buying, their trends and whatnot. So being contextual really helps the salespeople be, you know, finding the information quickly and be more educated doing their jobs. All right, let's open one more poll here. So what are your reporting tools? Please choose all the options applicable and submit and click submit. Still getting answers, please uh, be sure to click the submit button at the end. Ten more seconds. All right, thank you. I'm going to close the, the, the poll and share the results. Uh, so most people are using the reporting tools provided by the ERP and CRM vendor, uh, Excel, Crystal, and others. Thank you very much. Let's move along. So um, what about uh, data self um, analytics? Well, uh, I'm the company founder and CEO. And when I started this business 10 years ago, uh, the main vision was, well, in the mid-market, uh, companies using Sage, Microsoft, uh, Salesforce, and whatnot products, they have critical uh, uh, reporting needs, but the tools available are usually um, not the greatest. You know, they're kind of you know complicated, time-consuming, very IT-driven. So the vision that we have when we started the business was, well, let's find the Fortune 2000 world tools that are really easy to use. Let's make them uh, 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 more affordable. Let me let's make them uh, work for mid-sized uh, companies. So what we do in a nutshell is. That's it. You know, it's, it's pretty much the best of the breed made to work for you. That's it. That's what we do. We take Fortune 2000 technology, we make it affordable, we make it easy for you. Our current solution includes uh, Tableau and SQL Server, which was uh, uh, some of the most reputable BI technologies available for Fortune 2000. Uh, we add our own technology to make it simpler and faster to deploy and to maintain these other tools. And for the past 16 years, we have learned how people have been using our tool, and we have been kind of you know, crowdsourcing reports 
in today, out of the box, we have more than 5,000 reports, dashboard KPIs out of the box. So let me talk a little bit about, you know, why we chose Tableau and Microsoft. Uh, Gartner is one of the most reputable companies doing technology assessment for Fortune 2000. And for the past several years, they have rewarded Tableau and Microsoft as leaders in the upper market BI framework. So what we're bringing to you, as I said, is nothing but the very best from Fortune 2000. We make it simple, we make it work for you, and it does not break the bank. From an architecture standpoint, uh, we pull the data from your data sources, you know, your ERP, your CRM, Google Analytics and whatnot. We bring into a data warehouse using SQL Server platform. Uh, we, we use our own technology to eliminate programming. And then at the end of the day, people will be consuming reports using the Tableau Analytics platform, which is really impressive, easy to use, fast, and you can access your reports and dashboards anytime, anywhere using desktop, web, and mobile devices. And again, with a lot of reports as a starting point. Now, why do we use Tableau? Many people don't, are not aware of Tableau. Well, many other analytics platforms, they were designed by engineers, by geeks, making flashy things. Tableau is kind of the exception. When they're building their analytics platform, they use psychologists in graphic designers to help business people understand the data visually is very different from most of the other BI players. So let me talk a little bit more about them. Look at this. What should you do? That's kind of the idea behind Tableau, which if you see this, you don't have to think. You just jump, get the hell out of here. If we don't have this kind of you know visual cue to tell something right off the bat, maybe we have not survived as a species, but we have. Well, the thing is a little, you know, extreme example, but what Tableau does really well with data is, let me show some examples. If I ask you how many nines we have here, if you are most, if you are like most of us, it's going to take a while to count. You're going to get it, but you're going to, it's going to take, you know, several minutes. It's going to be time consuming, boring. What Tableau does is this. It's a very simple change. Now the nines are in bold and red. And in a few seconds, you can tell there's about 10. Awesome. Move on to the next part of your decision-making process. Rows and columns. Well, rows and columns is very popular. It's, it's awesome to do a lot of analysis. But when you're trying to do trend analysis, rows and columns are not so efficient because it takes a long time to figure things. Which uh, territories have the biggest sales? What is the biggest uh, uh, low profitability? Again. Unless you're gifted, it's going to take a while to interpret the numbers. With Tableau, we have, for instance, this. Now the longer bars are bigger sales. I can tell quickly that Central has the bigger sales. And I can quickly tell which items have low profitability. I mean, in a few seconds, I can see the main trends to make decisions. Rows, are import rows and columns are important. But trend analysis can also be important to make the decision-making process uh, more intuitive and, and faster. Uh, now, when I mention about psychologists and graphic designers, I'm talking about also not about being fluffy, being flashy. It's about being insightful. You're in a business. You're making money. You need to be efficient. So, for instance, 3D pie charts, they look beautiful. They do. But they are deceiving. Is it bigger the red or the, or the blue slices? It's kind of hard to tell. Tableau makes it hard. I mean, it's very hard to build 3D pie charts in Tableau because, because they're deceiving. In Tableau, when you look at pie charts, what you have is 2D because the important thing is being beautiful, yes, but most importantly, being insightful, and they excel at doing that. All right. Uh, so let me show you now a little bit of, you know, some ad hoc examples of looking at data self data. Uh, the examples that I show, be show you before would be usually uh, built and embedded into the sales managers and sales reps uh, 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 tools and procedures, right? But sometimes you may have different questions. You need to slice and dice the data. Maybe you are in a situation where the client asks a question and you 
don't know the answer. You have to find a new report. You have to build a new report from scratch. So I want to show uh, some ad hoc examples now in data self and also how people can consume the information. So now I'm switching to the uh, desktop application, data self desktop. And suppose, you know, I'm um, suppose I need to see a report showing my sales this month, and I want to see all the details, the invoices, the customers, the products, and whatnot. So it's pretty much drag and drop. I come here, and hey, I want to see sales, again, this month by customer. So I can bring the customer to my report. I just drag and drop customer to my report. These are all my customers. I want to see sales, so I drag and drop sales to my report. So total sales by customer. Well, I want to see this month. So I'm going to drag and drop my invoice date to my columns. And right now I see sales by year. I expand from year to quarter. I can expand from quarter to month. So I have all my company history here. It's a lot of data. I just want to see this month. Well, I can just slice, you know, do a filter. I'm going to take invoice date and drag and drop into my filters. I'm going to choose relative date and choose this month. That's it. Very simply, now I have the report showing sales by customer this month. And if later I want to kind of you know change the filter and look at you know prior month or maybe the last uh, four months or change the time bucket, it's a breeze. It's very straightforward. Well, but I also want to see product sold, invoice number, and whatnot. It's all drag and drop. Uh, if I want to see product, here it is. I'm going to drag and drop right here my products. So by customer, by product sales. I want to see invoice number. No problem. Just pick and choose. Many of our clients learned how to do reports like this just by learning, watching a video like this. It's pretty, you know, straightforward. I want to see profitability. No problem. Drag and drop. So building reports from scratch like this is very straightforward, and you can use desktop, web, and mobile devices to build these reports on the fly um, anytime, anywhere. So again, this kind of example is to tell people, well, I don't have the information in a report already, but I want to be self-sufficient. I want to find it by myself. Well, if you go to training, and sometimes it takes very little training, you can learn how to do these changes and, and become more self-sufficient. Uh, what if I want to see some trend analysis? You know, uh, well, we can bring a new report. And let's say I want to see uh, my sales uh, by month. Uh, well, so let's add sales to my report. And let's add the dates. And I want to see this by month. So right now I'm seeing sales by month in my whole company history. Uh, well, what if I want to associate with us my website visitors? How can I do that? Well, if you don't have a solution with a data warehouse, you almost cannot do that. Uh, with data self, um, we can connect, let's say, to your revenues connector, information from related information, from other data silos. In this example, we have added website visitors, which come from Google Analytics. It was an IT work. It took some time. But once we merged the information to the data warehouse, automatically, every day, is refreshed, or whatever the, the, the time period to refresh is. And as a business person, as a salesperson, I don't need to care about the back end. I just need to learn how to drag and drop. So if I put my website visitors in my report, so now these are website visitors. And let's make them bars so I can easily uh, tell them apart from my sales, which is a line. And maybe you can even put on a, on a dual axis. And now I see my bars, which are the website visitors, and my sales. And I can analyze if my website campaigns are helping with my sales. Again, this is kind of you know, ad hoc analysis capabilities that you can do using this kind of technology. My last example of ad hoc is uh, geographical analysis. Well, what if I want to see sales? by state, how big my deals are, everything on a map. So I just pick those three fields and I tell the tool, show me on a map. And there it is. Let's make the bubbles a little bigger. Bigger bubbles, bigger sales. 
and the bubbles are sliced by the size of the deals. Awesome. And finally, hey, uh, these three dashboards, I want to do these views in a dashboard to put on my iPad. Well, now I build a dashboard, and I just tell the tool, well, I want to put my map at the top, my trend analysis at the bottom, and my detail report on the right, all drag and drop again. You do not need to be a consultant, an IT person to be able to do these things. And now, once you're here, you, this, this, this dashboard can be sent to the web server. You can access it using, access it using mobile devices and whatnot. And it becomes very easy to touch it and, and get the data. Let's say, what if I want to see information from California and Texas? When I do that, my report changes and it shows my trend analysis in those two states in all the details right here. So very easy. Um, let me also show um, some of these also dashboards we have available out of the box that can be uh, uh, contextual for, for sales reps. Let me show you this one, which is pretty, uh, I think, informative. Uh, this kind of report is available out of the box, and it shows the top customers by sales change since last year to date. So these customers are growing the most in sales, and this is the sales growth. And these are declined the most in, in sales since last year to date. Now, do you need to, to look at this report every day? No, it's not going to change every day. But maybe every month, you want to receive this report, and you want to be sure you're keeping track of these customers who are declining the most because, hey, maybe something is wrong. So what you can do is you just tell the tool. You can subscribe and tell, send me this report to my email, email inbox automatically at the end of the month. So at least once a month or, or every week or whatever the time period is, you can check some of these trends. You know, some trends you need to look every day, some every week, maybe some every month, some every quarter. And you can kind of choose the subscription option to make it self-service. You don't have to go to the tool. You don't have to do remember. The tool will send you these trends on an email. And then once you open and you see the information, if you want to do more analysis and drill down, you can click on it and, and go right into the web page and do more an analytics. Alrighty, let's move along with our presentation. Uh, so what, what are the main benefits of data self? So first of all, the most important is empowering the decision makers, empowering the sales team so they become more self-sufficient. They can get their data anytime, anywhere in the context. And the way we do that is by using a data warehousing and analytics platform that is powered by the leaders in the Garden Magic Quadrant. So what you get from us is pretty much the best of the breed technology. Plus, we provide more than 5,000 reports out of the box. So you don't start with a, with a clean page of BI, but a lot of reports that we have learned that are valuable for many other businesses. The second is, with our technology, we're going to cut dramatically the time that it takes to get to your insights. So we shrink the time to get to the insights. You can analyze the data. We have more time to analyze the data, decide, and act on. So shrink the time to get to the data so you have more time for the other things. The way we do that is because the tool is much easier to build and modify reports. We can automatically, um, um, uh, we can automate repetitive data manipulation uh, procedures so you don't have to use you know, Excel, copy and paste. And we can also automatically distribute reports on different schedules. Already, uh, let's make our final poll. Uh, we'd like to hear from you how was this webinar. So please all, uh, choose all the options and please uh, click Submit. Please be sure to remember to click the Submit button. 10 more seconds. All right. Thank you very much. Let me share the results. So thank you. Everyone found it informative. Uh, many people found that uh, it met expectations, and some want to be contacted. Thank you very much. 
All right, uh, let's move to the questions and, and answers section. Uh, in the GoToWebinar panel, uh, there is a uh, chatting box, so if you can click uh, your questions, and I'm going to be answering them right now. Let me check if I have any questions already. Yep, I have a question here from Tim. Uh, what ERP products are supported by DataSelf? Uh, Tim, thanks for your question. It's a good one. Let me go here and go to my website. And if you come to the website and scroll down, you're going to find um, what is this? Um, um, analytics by ERP and CRM. So if you click on this button, You come to this page where it will list uh, the ERP and CRMs we uh, connect out of the box. And then if you click on one of them, uh, you'll get more information about uh, how the system works. Tim, thank you for your question. Let's see other questions. Um, question from Dave. Uh, how do I get trained on your product? Dave, thanks for your question. Uh, so training, um, when, we, when we sell the solution, you can buy or you can subscribe to the solution. Uh, we always include uh, training hours. Um, and typically, the training is um, from one to three hours as a starting point uh, on the client tool. And many people find that the beginning of these few hours is enough for them to become self-sufficient because there's also hours and hours of online videos available for self-training. If you come to our resource page and go to the training videos, there are a few hours of training, uh, which we consider like you no know, introductory that complement the live training. And then also on the Tableau website, there are several dozen hours of training that can also help you become self-sufficient. So training usually, it takes only a few hours of live, uh, instructor-led training that we do. Uh, many companies, they just take it off from there. In other companies, they ask us to do a lot more training. Now, like myself, I've never been through training with the Tableau tool. I just learned it by myself from scratch. And actually, many of our clients, many of the users from our clients, many of them also learn the tool uh, without actually going through formal training. The point is, the tool is really easy to use and it doesn't take a lot of time for people to become more self-sufficient. Uh, folks, we have more questions. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Um, we will be answering the questions by email, uh, so I appreciate that. Let me put here my contact information, my cell phone, my email, and my Twitter account. I hope you found this uh, session informative. Uh, we're gonna we're we're, um, we're gonna record the session, and then at the end. Uh, we're going to be sending you an email that provides you the link to the recording session, and feel free to share with other people. Folks, I hope you have a great Thursday. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day.